right? Welcome everyone to our Tuesday afternoon mastermind session. We call it Accelerated Breakthrough because that's exactly what we want to do. We want to accelerate your breakthrough to extraordinary results. So each week, as you well know, I invite somebody who's going to just pour into you, somebody who's going to share with them their, with you their wisdom, people that I've coached in my past, people that have achieved those extraordinary results. And today I've got a very special guest. His name is Dan Krembyshevsky, yet he goes by Krembo, Dan Krembo. And Dan, why don't you take a moment, just introduce yourself to our audience today. We should have a full house today, and you'll see a lot of people start coming in here in a moment. We got 44 now, but uh, should get over 100 today. So Dan, um, just tell us your story, buddy. Tell us, uh, how'd you get into real estate? How long ago? Uh, what do you love about it? What do you hate about it? Just give us the intro. Hell of an intro there, Sean. Uh, and you crushed it on my last name, too, because there's people I've known for a decade that still can't pull off the middle part of the 13 letter last name. So uh, good job with that. Yeah. I, uh, you know, I got, I got into the game right after pretty much, I mean, the, the height of the foreclosure market, 2011, 12, 13, uh, kind of found myself entering in a position where, you know, it was a, it was a solid, uh, it was a solid group to in business model to kind of, pour into right away. You know, there wasn't many systems and models back then. I used to get leads on a, on a note card that just had a, a, a name and a phone number. And we had stacks of them. Uh, we worked in a really shoddy uh, office in a low income area, just because we had at any point, the brokerage had a hundred REO listings. So we just, you know, we had, we had nothing to go off of. We had a name, maybe an address and a phone number. Uh, and usually we're calling on Twenty, thirty thousand dollar homes in the south suburbs of Chicago. So, I uh, got started doing that. Got got good at that. Um, you know, I think it was, you said it was Scott that was talking about it. Only takes one. Uh, it takes one client sometimes too. Uh, and and I got kind of uh, connected with that through the investment game. I ended up getting a pretty large hedge fund that allowed me to really formulate a business model within the uh, group that I had joined and. Uh, that helped provide everything that we're kind of building on today where I was able to learn a lot about the investments. I had uh, uh, some 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 big clients. I was slinging investment deals in 2015. That started slowing down and uh, I converted more into, you know, traditional residential sales and did that as a solo agent um, at uh, the big red box that I'm no longer at anymore. And, uh, you know, we had... Uh, I had gone through about what three or four, three or four KW Maps coaches before I got connected with Sean, and Sean's been my coach for four and a half years, I think now, or four years now. Feels and, like a uh, lifetime, Dan. It feels like a lifetime. <laughs> yeah, it's been a long. It's, it's been. A, listen, when you go through three coaches in twelve months, uh, and you know, I don't know about anybody else on this, but I was. I, I'm not somebody that you know, you can say, okay, you, you want to sell 10 more homes this year. And there's, there's, there's 10 weeks left of the year. You need to sell one home this week. What are you going to do this week to sell one home? I, I wanted bigger thinking. I wanted, uh, you know, more of business model stuff and, uh, and, and somebody to have those conversations with Sean. I don't think we've had one conversation in the last two years about necessarily like, what are you going to do for your production today? It's all been bigger picture stuff, moving pieces around, uh, big ideas. And obviously, you know, we, uh, we were able to take a lot of that and then even put our own spin on some stuff. And, uh, you know, you're familiar with my partner, Michelle, who also just, you know, grabs a whiteboard and starts jotting down a bunch of stuff. And, and uh, you know, some of it, some of it works wonderfully and some of it doesn't, but that's kind of where we're at now. You know, we're, we're uh, recently moved over to EXP, continuing to build the team, grow the team. We have a branch office for EXP now, so we're really focused on rev share. Uh, we're doing stuff that even six months ago, I didn't think we'd be doing. I mean, we got an event we got a December event planned. We're running a, a big mastermind tomorrow as a feeder event for that, for that big event. Uh, I've never been, you know, I've never been the, the person that's had to, you know, plan a convention center and book flights and hotels for speakers and, and hire audio video guys. So that, uh, that aspect of stuff is kind of fun right now too. Um, 
I think you asked what I love and hate about it. I love being able to impact other people. I hate, uh, I don't want to say hate, but like, I, I don't want to, <laughs> I don't want to be that person. I mean, anybody that knows me that's watching this or anybody in my office right now, they know that I'm not necessarily Mr. People person. I, I can come off abrasive and uh, I'm, I'm not that, you know, when I, when I was, a solo agent selling for myself you have to there's a certain role you got to play you know sometimes you get done with an appointment and you go back to your car and kind of that but uh but yeah that the I, I i wasn't a big fan of being a door opener you know uh i love the the inner workings of a team i love being able to sacrifice some of uh you know maybe my success in order for longer term success that also impacts people along the way uh and, and 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 probably my favorite thing is that other people start buying into it as well and then they feel the same way so uh and that's that 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 would be michelle because michelle obviously we have a uh you know we have a, a pretty unique organizational model and you know we have a director of sales and she kind of has that same mindset that i do where you know she's giving up some of her per personal business to help build others all for a longer term goal and also impacting people along the way. So that's the favorite thing. Sorry, they had saws going in the background. I had to mute myself, but uh, oh, it seems to have died down. So all good things. Well, Dan, uh, let's rewind the tape, though. All right. When you engaged with me, it was you and you had one administrative support. So yeah. what's happened since then? I mean, seriously, tell us about the journey. What, what did you expect? What did you get? What did you learn through the process? What were the failures or learning experiences? And what were the successes along the way? Talk to us about that. Okay, so what was I expecting? I thought that like I would hire and never fire. I thought I would immediately go into like doubling my production. Um, I thought I, I thought pretty much everything that was incorrect. I, I underestimated the uh the attrition rate i underestimated the you know expectations i should have of others uh sometimes you sometimes you automatically if you're a mega agent sometimes you automatically think that there's going to be you know you're going to attract other mega agents which just you know some people may appear that part but don't really uh end up being that part you know uh, I learned about the honeymoon phase there's a lot of people that you're really excited about early on and it doesn't take long to uh to have that kind of start crumbling a little bit so those are some of the some of the expectations I, I I didn't or some of the things I didn't expect right off the bat but uh and I kind of underestimated some of the negative outcomes um but the uh I would say yeah when we had just an administrative assistant um really we kind of went into the VP organizational role like uh like identifying that role right away and uh you know who's now a partner michelle was like one of she was probably the fourth agent i hired um she was probably the fourth agent i hired uh and you know the other three kind of fell off and michelle was door knocking in the winter um pregnant um she was you know really willing to and this is one of the exciting parts about this part of the business was like you know you have somebody that it, it, again it only takes one right you have one person that also buys into a model and then on top of that they're willing to do whatever it takes or try whatever it takes you know there's not a lot of people that are willing to door knock and put themselves in those uncomfortable positions uh call cancels and expireds and work on that work fizzbos um you know really go through every lead generation technique to figure out what we're good at what's working what isn't and how we can build a business around it uh aside from just you know sean you know I, I did a lot of facebook ads really early on um you know now there's a lot of crms that just one click and you can run an ad but i was running my own stuff for a long time after uh after taking a grant wise class in 2017 so uh finding out our business model and our kind of just where we fit and what worked and what didn't um you know that took some time and we've had you know we have a really good culture here now we have a lot of talented people but it wasn't always this um this comfortable we had we've i mean how we just left we we lost four people this this year alone you know <laughs> so yeah still happen well, building a team can be painful yet we went from dan and one admin to this you guys let me share my screen i'm going to show you where he's at as of 
Well, this was August, okay. Yeah, there might be some might be some people in there that aren't. I don't know. Pretty up to date. Pretty up to date, no doubt about that. Yet, yeah, here's where we're headed in the future. And a lot of people, you look at this and you say, "Man, I don't want to manage that many people. I don't want, but want to be responsible for that many people." Yet, I, I want you to take a look at, at Michelle here. Michelle was an agent who just joined Dan right when he hired me, and she really proved herself. Like Dan said, door knocking in the winter pregnant, right? And she proved herself and she was promoted then to director of sales. Now she manages all the agents on the team. If you look at this org chart, Dan really manages three people, right? He, he manages his director of sales, Michelle. He is currently lead ISA with Michelle and then operations director. Uh, and he's got to find that role. So that's why I put it in that burnt orange color because he's got to replace himself there. Yet once he does that, guys, he's just he's managing three people. That's it. And yet you can bring all these agents beneath the director of sales. Now, with that said, we're going to talk a little bit about the VP of sales role, Dan. And I want you to describe mm -hmm. that because really that's the next step in the evolution of your organizational chart is that you're going to promote the agents to the VP of sales role. Why don't you talk a little bit about what we've discussed and how that could impact somebody who wants to really build a team aggressively? Yeah, it's just a light version of a director of sales role. You know, number one, it relieves some pressure from Michelle so that she's not having to, uh, you know, manage 15 or 20 agents at a time, but it also provides opportunity. So, uh, you know, we don't, I, I've been around enough teams, I, uh, the standard teams, you know, I, I've, I've seen people be an ISA for four years, be a, you know, be a, be a buyer agent for four years or, and not be able to, to uh, you know, take on any leadership roles within an organization. And, uh, you know, we didn't want that for sure. And I think that, you know, when we started going over that model and seeing how it could kind of provide opportunity, you know, for people to build a business within our business, build their team within our team model, we would just provide the leverage and the systems and models and technology for it. Uh, it just makes a lot of sense. So like the VP role is essentially a lighter version of a director of sales role. You just move up that chain um, where they're allowed to recruit, you know, when they hit, when they hit a certain number of recruits within a certain number of production, um, they're essentially a VP of that team and they do get an override on it. Um, just like a director of sales gets an override on the overall production. Uh, and so really it gives them something to shoot for. And we do have, you know, we, we, we've we added a couple more pieces since we updated that sheet. So we do have people that are actually starting to fill in that role. And we got a reasonably large bench as well. We, we consistently have people in class or, uh, you know, recruitment appointments uh, for the team and stuff. So we try to keep that bench and then we're trying to make these pieces fit for other people to actually take on more opportunity. So, um, you know, I, I think it's pretty exciting for a lot of people to take advantage of it and they get to learn a little bit more about leadership and management and coaching. And, and uh, you know, I think it, when you have a good culture, you like helping others as well. So I think a lot of our, a lot of our agents are on board with that. And uh, naturally that would lead to a pretty solid candidate for VP. You're still on mute, Sean. Thank you. I'm sorry, you guys. I got background noise going crazy. But uh, ultimately, where we're headed, the future organizational chart is you intend to promote Michelle from director of sales to president of sales. Then you're going to promote an agent. And Jen has shown some, some promise there, right, to director of sales. You'll promote another agent to director of sales, another agent to director of sales, right? And so Michelle will manage the director of sales agents mm -hmm. and beneath them we'll we'll have vps of sales who will manage agents beneath them see what we're trying to do here guys <clears throat> we're gonna well not what we're trying what we're doing is building a large team okay a very large team and yet most agents when they get into team building they start hiring agents to keep up with the lead demand okay so you figure out how to generate leads good for you you generate five six seven hundred leads a month way to go and now you need bodies to fill those positions, to communicate with those people. And we end up with, you know, 15, 16, 17, 18 different agents on the team. And they're all looking to you for leadership and management advice. You know, some of you may have heard the story about Kelly. I coach her up in Dallas. I've coached her since 2017. In fact, when I left Keller Williams 2016, and I, I did a, a mastermind event in January of 2017, 
And Kelly comes into the room like 15 minutes before the event's going to kick off. It's a four hour event. And she comes up and on purpose, I mean, you can tell this woman is driven, right? And she comes up to me and she just gives me this knuckle breaking handshake, right? Like cracked my knuckles. And she says, Sean, I don't have four hours to sit here. Just give me the cliff notes real quick. I'll be out of here. <laughs> so I got to know Kelly a little bit. And, you know, here's what I learned about Kelly. In 2016, they closed out at 172 million in total sales volume. Not bad, not bad. She had 16 agents on her team for administrative support. Yet I also learned she she won award after award. Everybody knew her name. Seriously, she she created a brand. And I also learned she was completely miserable with her life. I'm telling you, she was working 70, 75 hours a week. She had an eight-year-old son. She missed all of his soccer practices and most of his games. She hadn't taken a vacation for three years. She was miserable. So I, I told Kelly, please do yourself a favor, do your business a favor, sit down. Seriously, sit down, cancel whatever you got going on. Spend the next four hours with me. Take great notes, pay attention. Seriously, Kelly, it's going to do you so much good for your future. And she took that advice and I'm so grateful. She sat down. She took copious notes throughout the event. She engaged me as her coach immediately thereafter. Now, here's the thing. What she'd built was an organizational chart that was very wide and super shallow. Everybody was looking to her for management and leadership advice. Now, there's a term in the military called span of control. Okay, span of control means the number of people who can effectively report to you that you can effectively manage. And that number is three to five people, guys. Now, she had 20. No wonder she was so miserable. Now, over the course of the next three months, we went through uh, an, an assessment of each of the employees, all the independent contractors, the agents, the Bottom line is we were able to reorganize her organization. We got her down to four direct reports. See, the best part about your direct reports when building a team, Dan, is that their job is their job. And she didn't quite understand that. Mm -hmm. Meaning she was the, the knight in shining armor that would ride in on, on her stallion and save them. And she kept getting involved in the situation. Now, here's the thing. When you find a person of talent, your job as a leader is to lean into that talent to let them succeed or fail on their own merit. Dan, one thing you said earlier that I just loved is that Michelle gets on the whiteboard and she just starts going crazy on it because that tells me she's acting like an owner. Therefore, we must compensate them like an owner. So Dan, I want to get into that today as well. Yeah. And we got we to we be quick. So I'm going to you know, kind of mm -hmm. cut back a little bit, but here's the point. Kelly, over the course of the next three months, got her down to four direct reports got her down from 70, 75 hours per week invested in this business down to like 45 to 50 hours per week. In 2017, she took three week long vacations, something she hadn't done in years. And in 2017, remember in 2016, she closed out 172 million. Well, in 2017, they closed out over 240 million in production. Gang, it's about working smarter, not harder. It's about applying leverage to your business models, and that's exactly what Dan is here to talk to us about. So talking about compensating people like owners, Dan, mm -hmm. talk to us about Michelle's compensation model. What does that look like? And how do you retain her? Because here's the problem. When you start building a team and somebody starts gaining success, well, they get drunk on the wine of that success, don't they? Yeah. And what do they do then, Dan? Uh, typically, uh, just want to go and do it themselves. That's exactly right. So how are you retaining a person of talent in Michelle? Because Michelle is talent, no doubt about that. Uh -huh. I've had the pleasure of coaching with her for years and she's amazing, no question. Yet, how do you retain her? Yeah, I uh yeah, it's, I mean it's difficult, right? Because there is there's 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 compensation and then there's recognition and there's uh some freedom in there too, with uh, you know, there's although although the you know, S Corp that owns the team it only reflects my name. I think I've, I hope I've made her feel like I should probably go ask her. I hope I've made her feel like uh, she is a partner. She does, you know, she's got, you can't put somebody in a director of sales position with, you know, moving up to a, a, a president, right? Uh, without giving them the ability to act uh, and build the business the way they want to build it, knowing that you hired them to do that, you know? Uh, and I, 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 that was probably the hardest thing is moving into that role when Michelle was managing the team and taking over. Like there was, 
looking back on it, I would probably like, I was probably at the time saying like, no, I'm, I can let go. I can let go, even though you're not letting go of anything. You're really, you're really having a hard time, uh, really having a hard time letting somebody else run your business for you. So there's a lot of trust there, but um, yeah, the compensation to be, to be honest, like constantly feels like it's not enough because there is sacrifices that are made when you are a leader. Um, but I think that you know, we do as much as we can. There is profit sharing. Okay. Uh, I know you said be quick, but there is profit sharing. Um, now, when we initially had the net profits interest, our books were kind of a mess. And when I moved into the profit first, uh, you know, process financially, you kind of start saving profit every, every, uh, every two weeks. And so, um, you know, our process for that is like, hopefully we have a nice chunk of change. We take half of that and cut profit checks that way, um, which has allowed, um, has allowed for uh, some, some, some decent checks at the end of every quarter, right? Uh, instead of doing it at the end of the year. I know the initial one we had at the end of the year, but yeah, uh, dude, that, that book is great because we were never saving money before. I don't even know what I changed, but we were never saving money before that. There's two books that actually like changed how I viewed things this year. And it was Profit First and Atomic Habits. Like those two books mixed together uh, really changed the way you look at business. But um, but compensation, you know, there's a little bit, uh, obviously there's an, there's an override on, on the production of the, the agents she's managing, right? So there's a 10% override on that comes out of the team, right? So, you know, the, the challenge with that for any team owners is, your number has got to be good. And so does your conversion because it's hard to make 40% margins work. Um, that's just the reality of it, right, Sean? I mean, that's 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 been the challenge. Um, and not to say that it isn't worth it, it just puts the business as a whole, um, it, 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 it puts the business as a whole in a little bit of a challenging spot when it comes to driving revenue or making sure you're driving revenue. So there's a 10% override on the team's portion of any agents that do business. Um, obviously her SOI, it, it, there's a little bit more there because she is giving up some of her production. So um, splits are a little bit different. And then there's uh, you know profits that are split quarterly. That's compensation. Right but there's on. also recognition, right? There's there's also recognition. There's the title. That doesn't hurt either. Not at all. Um, yes. See, people will work hard for money. They will die or even kill for recognition, okay? Mm -hmm. So giving them that title sometimes inspires them to act more like an owner, no doubt about that. Yet, Dan, here's, here's my intention today. I want to give them some actionable strategies or tactics that they can implement like right now today in their business to increase their lead flow, their appointments, their contracts, their income, their bank account balance and net worth. So what's one thing you would give them in terms of advice to generate more leads to set more appointments? One thing, man, write up like 30 different ABC scripts. <laughs> I'm not even kidding <laughs> right now. Uh, no, I think, I think now more than ever is like a skill set thing, especially if you have especially if you have a team uh if you have a team of, of newer agents like like we have a lot of younger agents the market they've seen the last 18 months didn't uh it's kind of it, it, listen they were able to do well but it's a little bit of smoke and mirrors because we didn't have to work that hard to have those conversations you know right. um and, and it's kind of unfair because you know it was a little bit crazy there for a while but essentially you just had to open up a door and then tell people what your competition may have been doing in order to get that deal so and we have a, a ton of talented people on our team and uh it, so it, it it wasn't really fair that's not that wouldn't be the ideal market i'd want to jump into because you know when when the correction happens which it has it makes you know you got to rebuild that skill set so uh i think constant attention to your skill set. If we want to loop this all the way back to the Barry Sanders conversation uh, at the beginning, listen, professional athletes at the height of their popularity and production practice every single day. So there is no reason that nobody else can. So, uh, you know, ABC scripts, powerful thing, perfecting a buyer consult. That's also really powerful, especially when it comes to setting expectations and, uh, and, uh, and, and, and really educating them on what to expect and, uh, and skill set, overall skill set, practicing and uh, just making sure that your objection handlers are on point and things like that, you know? Right on. So for those of you who don't know, ABC scripts, now this is part of my methodology. It stands for action, 
benefit commitment. So you as a salesperson, you're going to outline the action. What do you want your prospect to do? Do you want to get on the Zoom meeting? Do you want to meet face-to-face? -face? Have them come into your office? Do you meet in your mortgage company's office, title company's office? Whatever you want them to do, the moment that you ask them to take an action, there's a question that appears in their mind. Am I right, guy? Yeah. Seriously, am I right? There's a question that appears in their mind. Dan, what is that question? What do you think it is? What's in it for me? That's exactly right. So you immediately segue into the benefit and you say, here's what's in it for you. Seriously, put it on a platter. Say, here's what's in it for you. Here's why you should say yes. And then you go right to the commitment, which should be alternative choice. So Dan, your advice is powerful. See, those people that figure out how to ask for what they want, they're going to get more of what they want when they want it. Mm -hmm. And if you don't know what you're going to say or how you're going to say it, or you can do something super cheesy, like, would you like to get together? <laughs> See, that's a yes or no question, right? Right. How you ask for what you want will determine the outcome of this conversation. So Dan, sadly, we're at the bottom of the hour and we've got to cut this thing right now because I've got a, an attraction appointment that I have jumped to yet. How many of you guys, real quick, show of hands or go to the the um, the reactions tab and show your hand if your screen isn't illuminated yet. Uh, how many of you guys would like to have Dan back again in a couple of weeks? Anyone? <laughs> Okay. Oh, man. All right. Based on that, you guys, um, we're going to have Dan back and we're going to go deep into compensation models so you can build your team. Plus, we're going to go deep into how he's generating so many leads. I mean, Dan, you're generating 300 leads a month. How are you doing it? And that's what I want to get to. So we're going to have Dan back and we're going to we're going to just pour into you guys. We're going to improve your business, your mindset, your habits and everything in the process. Sadly, we have to cut it. So we're going to do it again next week. I'm going to be on a cruise with my family. Yet, yeah, Tim Ventura, can you un un unmute real quick? Are you going to run that? You're going to run that show, aren't you? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. In the meantime, for everybody. Hey, Tim, I can't hear you, bud. Oh. There you go. Now I got you. Okay. Sorry about that. Yeah. Also, I, I encourage everybody to visit iconcoaching.com. We are going through and rebuilding the website. So. Um, I would have everyone take a close look at that. I'm really excited about that. But Oh, man, I'll tell you, there's some exciting things happening there, Tim. No doubt about that. By the way, um, my right-hand man, Paul Hallam, he posted in the chat, guys, if you maybe want some help, I'm serious. If you want some help, there's nothing wrong with asking for it. We want to offer you a free coaching session. We're going to spend 30 minutes with you. You can invest that time with Paul. Paul's going to help you solve at least one problem in your business, at least one problem. He's going to help you with your knowledge, your skills, your mindset, your habits, guy, guys, you grow to the extent that you personally grow. I mean, if Paul could show you how to make an extra $50,000 next year or 100,000 or 500,000 next year, wouldn't it be worth the time investing just 30 minutes to just sit down and talk with Paul? Jump on a, jump on a call with Paul, seriously. It's going gonna, it's gonna to pay massive dividends, right? Until we talk again next time. I'm going to be back in two weeks yet. Yeah, Tim, you're going to run the show next week, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. And you're going to have a guest. We're going to, we're going to make it awesome for you. No doubt about that. I'm going to talk to you again in two weeks until then, just be on purpose, be productive, be powerful as always gang. I look forward to it. Talk to y'all soon. Bye-bye. Let's John. talk. Let's talk.